Professor Dave here. Let's talk about Claisen condensation. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So we've learned a few things about enolate chemistry. We learned about aldol condensation. And now it's time to learn a similar reaction. It's called Claisen condensation. And so uh, here, the, the key thing that we want to see for, right off the bat is that whereas aldol condensation was operating on aldehyde or ketone substrates, here we are working with an ester substrate. Okay, so once again, an ester, if we recall, that is uh, an ester group is a, carbon con uh, that is a, uh, a carbonyl connected to OR. Right, so if it was OH, it would be a carboxylic acid, but it's OR, meaning O, and then more alkyl, that is an ester substrate. And so we are operating with an ester. Again, we're going to be using strong base. One key feature we should point off right, off, uh, right, right at the start here is that this, this alkoxide right here, this OR, and this OR must match. These must be the same if we're going to do Claisen condensation effectively because the thing is, whereas we are going to do enolate chemistry, this base is going to get this alpha proton. We're going to do enolate chemistry. When we have an ester, there is the opportunity for competing transesterification. So we know that something like an alkoxide could attack this carbonyl, pop that up, pi bond could come back down, kick that off, and we would get a different OR group. So if these do not match, then we're going to get a mess in solution. There's going to be a lot of different products. But if these do match, then if an alkoxide does do that, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change the substrate, right? OR attacks, kicks this one off. It's just another OR. It's the same molecule. So that's one thing to be aware of. In Claisen condensation, the uh, alkoxide must match this alkoxy group in the ester. So with that understood, let's go ahead and go through the mechanism. We've got an alkoxide base and we're going to go and do really this doesn't change the chemistry very much at all we're just going to go ahead and do enolate chemistry we're going to make our enolate <clears throat> so here we have formed our enolate and then just the way that when we did aldol condensation we could have an aldehyde attack another molecule of itself or a ketone attack another molecule of itself same thing here this ester uh, that we've enolized can, jo can just go ahead and attack another equivalent of the same thing. And so uh, it's an ester, but it's no different. We are going to have the enolate attack the carbonyl carbon right there, and we're going to kick that pi bond up there. And so here is where it starts to get a little bit different because unlike the aldol uh, condensation, we have an intermediate here where this OR group is there because we've attacked uh, an ester. And so this gets a little bit different. This is actually going to go ahead and come down. We're going to reform that carbonyl and we're going to kick off that alkoxy group. Okay. So the, uh, the enolate attacked the carbonyl, but then because of the presence of this alkoxy group, we were able to reform that second carbonyl. So this is our product. This is the product of the Claisen condensation. Just to be very thorough mechanistically, we must understand that uh, <clears throat> from here, we still do have a lot of uh, alkoxide in solution. And this, uh, these two protons here, right, we've got some protons here. Uh, these are now alpha to two carbonyls. So whereas we've got a, a certain pKa up here, uh, this is going to be several orders of magnitude more acidic because the resulting enolate uh, uh, that you could form if you grab one of these, we've got pi electron density distributed all, all along a much larger portion of the molecule. So if we have strong base, if we have base that's strong enough to get this proton, you better believe that we're going to enolize that. So in solution, we can't stop that. That is going to go ahead. We've got alkoxide. We are going to enolize, and we can just leave. Once again, there is a lot of resonance to speak of there. That could be delocalized all around there. But we'll just draw this resonance structure. So we are going to deprotonate there. And then just to be very clear in terms of when we're doing chemistry, it's not until aqueous acidic workup, right? We've got our solution. The chemistry is done. And then that's when we pour in some uh, ammonium chloride or something like that, where we're just going to very lightly protonate uh, any anions in solution to get a neutral product. So that is just going that is just going to go and get that proton from whatever this uh, whatever this acid is upon workup, and that is going to give us our beta dicarbonyl compound. So uh, beta because if this is one of them, then 
two carbons away, right, alpha, beta. At the beta position, we have another carbonyl. That is a beta dicarbonyl compound. A Claisen condensation will always operate on an ester substrate, and it will give us a beta dicarbonyl compound as our product. So that is the mechanism for the Claisen condensation. So we just saw what happens when we do Claisen condensation where one ester is reacting with another molecule of itself. But just like the way we can have crossed aldol condensation, where we have two different aldehydes or ketones, we can also have crossed Claisen condensations. So we can have two different esters reacting. So we have this ester and this other ester. And uh, in order to understand what's going to happen, we have to be aware of the fact that uh, whichever, whichever of these esters is going to become the enolate, must, must be enolizable. It must be able to be enolized. It must have protons that are available for enolization. And so we look at this here, and what do we notice about this compound here? Uh, where are the alpha protons? Well, here's the carbonyl, so the position alpha to the carbonyl is here. But there are no implied hydrogens there. there. There are no hydrogens at all, right? This carbon is participating in four bonds to other carbons, right? One, two this way, and the fourth that way. So there are no hydrogens there. There is no alpha proton. That is not enolizable. This cannot become the enolate. This, on the other hand, it absolutely can because we do have three alpha protons right here. So that's going to be fine. So we've got our uh, ethoxide base. Notice that it must be ethoxide because in this case, we've got these ethoxy groups on these esters. If it was something else, we could be getting transesterification. That would be a mess in solution. But we've got our, uh, our ethoxide. So let's use our ethoxide and let's go and get a proton. And let's make our enolate. So we've made that pi bond, and there we are there. And now let's go ahead and react with this guy. This is going to preferentially do the cross clays, and we're going to react with this. So let's draw that here. So we've got this coming down here. This enolate is going to attack right there. Pop that open. So what do we have? We've got this. We've got O minus up there. We've got OET up there. And then it was this carbon here that attacked, right? So this is the new bond. This is the new bond right here. This rest of the molecule was this. And now this is connected to a two-carbon ester, right? So let's draw those. OK, so this is the key step. This is the carbon-carbon bond forming step. So we have to understand that it is this carbon here, right, just as with aldol condensation or any other kind of enolate chemistry we're looking at, this pi bond reformed, this carbon is now attached to this carbon. So this red bond, this red sigma bond represents this arrow right there. We have formed that new bond. This was a carbonyl, and we kicked that pi bond up over to make O minus. And now, if we recall the mechanism, the next thing that's going to happen, this is going to come down here to reform the carbonyl, and we're going to kick off ethoxide. We're going to kick off that ethoxy group. Okay, And we are going to get our Claisen condensation product, which is a beta dicarbonyl. And uh, we will get ethoxide there, right? We did lose ethoxide. So this is our beta dicarbonyl product. Now, with the mechanism, again, there's, there's more ethoxide in solution. We would deprotonate that, and then we would, uh, with aqueous acidic workup, reprotonate. But uh, right now, we're just really concerned with, with what the product is. Mechanistically, we do want to be aware that that is happening in solution. But this is the product. This is our Claisen condensation product. It is a beta dicarbonyl compound, and it is a crossed Claisen condensation. 
Let's look at just one more example of a Claisen condensation. Uh, this is an interesting case here. Let's say we have this substrate. Notice that we have two ester groups on here. And let's see what's going to happen. We've got ethoxide. Again, this, uh, ethoxy, this ethoxide matches the ethoxy groups on the esters. And uh, at first, nothing is going to be too surprising, right? We have, uh, we have some protons. This is a symmetric molecule, so it doesn't matter where we get the alpha protons from. Uh, so let's take our ethoxide and let's go and get this one. And let's make our enolate. And so here is our enolate. So now this is an interesting situation though because we have an enolate here and we know that the enolate during Claisen condensation is going to attack uh, an ester. It's going to attack another ester and we have ester functionality uh, on that molecule already. And so we have the opportunity to do an intramolecular reaction here and anytime intramolecular chemistry is possible, it's going to be much, much faster than any intramolecular chemistry because uh, in order for an intramolecular reaction to occur, the, 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 two, the two reagents have to find each other in solution. And that takes time because they're drifting aimlessly, they need to collide. Here, what this wants to react with is tethered to the molecule already. So they're going to find each other. As these sigma bonds are rotating, this is snaking around. This is going to get into proximity of that carbonyl very quickly in solution. So the intramolecular reaction is going to happen way before uh, it's going to find some other ester, right? Another molecule of this and do uh, an intermolecular reaction. So let's show the intramolecular possibility here. And now this, this is the step that can usually be confusing to many students. Let's make sure <clears throat> that, oh sorry, actually this was not from here. Let's have this go down there and then this pi bond, right? And so if this pi bond is attacking, remember that we're reforming the carbonyl here. This carbon is the one that is doing the attacking. So let's see how many members are in our ring. Right, if we are doing an intramolecular reaction, this is going to be a cyclization and we can see that carbon one is attacking carbon five. So we're going to produce a five-membered ring, right? So here is our five-membered ring. And uh, let's say, let me draw that a little better. <clears throat> let's say that we call this carbon one. Let's go ahead and number these. One, two, three, four, five. So that's just, to, ju that's just to help us understand what's going on. We said that carbon one, right, this pi bond flipped out and uh, attacked carbon five. That means that this is the new bond right there. That's the bond that was formed by the cyclization. And so carbon one also had the rest, right, this ester group reformed. So let's draw that. We have got that ester group there. Okay, so that carbonyl reformed and that ester group is intact. Carbon-5 now, however, has O- minus and O ethyl, right, because this uh, carbonyl, right, we have that O- minus there now. So let's draw that. And so really, mechanistically, it's not that much different, just like a Claisen condensation, a regular one, this is going, this is going to, right, this is going to pop that ethoxy group off there. So that ester group once again is intact and we have reformed uh, that carbonyl. So this is still a beta dicarbonyl compound, right? We've got this carbonyl alpha beta, two away but this was a cyclization reaction. And as it happens, when we do a cyclic, uh, when we do an intramolecular uh, Claisen condensation or cyclization reaction, this is called a Dieckmann condensation. 
So that's just a little bit of a different name that indicates that it is an intramolecular reaction, it is a cyclization, but really mechanistically it's the same. We are starting with an ester substrate, uh, it's just that the ester that is being attacked is on the same molecule, and we do end up with a beta dicarbonyl uh, compound as our product, and so that's what we need to know about Claisen condensation and Dieckmann condensation. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.